Welcome to Simply Walk the Talk. Our bodies and minds adapt to what we do most of the time. If you want to change your body and mind, you must change what it is you do most of the time. This podcast explores all things health, wellness, fitness, lifestyle, and biohacking. Stay tuned as we explore various thoughts, methods, and experiences from a multitude of conversations between our interesting guests and experts through many fields of work. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Simply walk the Simply walk the What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Simply Walk the Talk. I am your host, Joshua J. Holland, and today we have a we have a guest on the show that happens to be a uh, a two time guest. Um, we have Mr. Anders Olson on the show, and if you want to know more about Anders and the first time we actually had him on the show, uh, you can check out episode one seventy three at Simply Walk the Talk. And we really dove into, we dived into <laughs> all the things that he does in terms of being a pulmonot, what that even means. Um, he's a breathing expert. He was featured in the book Breath by James Nestor. Uh, that's how I became to understand who he is. In fact, he created the relaxator, which is around my neck. And uh, this is what this looks like. You probably have seen some some videos and content in which I really use this and, and I showed like the ways that I use it to, to de-stress and to build up lung capacity and all that fun stuff. So that episode is full of content and full of information that I, I assure you, you can use. So today uh, on this episode, we're going to talk about just kind of catching up. We're going to talk about the carbohaler. We're going to talk about um, the book, Shut Your Mouth, which you may have seen me post about as well, which was a very interesting read. And we're also going to talk about the CB, the uh, that would be the Conscious Breathing Summit that is coming up. So stay tuned. This will be one of the one of the shorter episodes, but we want to use this as a way to kind of catch everyone up and give an update. So Mr. Anders Olson, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, John. Yeah. Um, so where are you now? Like what's, what's going on in your world and your life? Uh, let's, let's kind of start with that. And then we'll talk about a few other things. Right now. Well, I'm putting a lot of effort in preparing the conscious breathing summit in September. So mm. it's exciting to get the speakers list together and, uh, promoting it. And, yeah, uh, this is, it, that's yeah, one of the things that, that it, sorry to cut you off, but, um, Speaking of, you know, the summit in September, I desperately wanted to be a part of that. Uh, and yeah. I know we had talked about being a part of that, but as mm -hmm. you know, and as most people know, I'm on tour right now with Roger Waters. Um, but I can assure you, for anyone listening or watching at this point, if you get an opportunity to go to this summit or to participate in any way, I think it's going to be life changing. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, you might see me post about the CB Summit. That is Conscious Breathing Summit. And if you've ever wanted to understand breath work, or if you've ever wanted to understand anything about how to get your breathing un under control or to, to sleep better or to de-stress easier, you definitely want to stay tuned and check that out. So I want to offer that for now. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really exciting. And it's unfortunate that you couldn't be one of the speakers, Josh, but uh, maybe next time, hopefully. Hopefully next time. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and we're, we're always connected. So I, I never fear that we lose connection. That's, that's definitely something that will be, uh, ongoing. Yeah. Um, but in terms of what we both have been going through today marks the day, June 28th. I don't know when this episode is going to come out, but we're recording today, June 28th, which happens to be the day of the official release of the awareness shift, my book with, uh, Tessa Cash. And um, and you and I are able to relate because we're now both published authors, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, 
and I know the journey has been very difficult for me. And so I can only imagine how it's been for you. How many books have you put out and, and, and what has that process been like for you? I've only put, a, put out one book, but it's both in Swedish and in English. So I put in a lot of effort in, in both versions. And uh, now I'm in the process of updating it. And um, it came out already in 2012, the Swedish version, and 2014, the English version. And I can still remember how hard it was. <laughs> it was yeah. really, really, really tough to... Um, um, yeah, to, to get the structure, to, to piece it all together. And, and to some, a lot of times you had an idea and you followed the research and you realized, no, the research can't back up this, these theories. So you just wasted a week or, or so. But it was a <laughs> learning curve, really. Mm. I, I, even though it was very hard, I don't regret it at all. Well said. And uh, what, what is the title of that book? For those Conscious who don't know. Breathing. Of course, yeah. You know, I know that because I've read the book. But I also, um, I just wanted to make sure for those who who didn't know this or didn't know you, um, they could go and check it out. It's a really good book, um, and I, I've talked so much about breath work and breathing, and even the book Breath. There's so many people in my orbit that have utilized that book, and I also mm -hmm. throw in conscious breathing. And now I throw out the, the book, um, Shut Your Mouth, mostly because it's, it's a book that was republished by you and your company. And, but it's adapted from, from that. like, how long ago was this book written? It was written so long ago. And I'd like to talk about that. Yeah, 150 years ago. Wow. 1870, you said? Yeah, 1870. Isn't that interesting, right? Like, it's, it's one of those books that I use as a resource to say, listen, this breath work conversation has been around for decades. It's yeah. been around for centuries, clearly, right? Um, uh, more than a century. So uh, let's talk about that. Let's, let's dive into that because I, when you first talked to me about that, I thought it was interesting that there was this, this bit of information that was out there, but then you sort of republished it, readapted it, so to speak. But let's talk about you know, why you decided to do that and the importance of it. Yeah. I mean, George Catlin is the author, and he spent uh, about 30 years of his life uh, dedicated to document the life of the the North and Middle and Central, uh, sorry, North, Central, and South American Indians. Mm. And he wrote the book, Shut Your Mouth and Save Your Life, based on his experience, because he traveled back and forth visiting the savages as they were called and then going back to the civilized world and he noticed there was a huge difference in their health the, mm. the, the savages they had extraordinary health while when you read the bill of mortality in the 1850s uh, he quoted uh, for example in in london and in stockholm and other cities in europe um, in london i think only half of the, the, the kids survived their second birthday and only a quarter survived their 25th birthday. While when he looked at the, um, the Indians, there were no such thing as diseases or, or uh, child um, children dying. Which virtually, of course, there could be an accident, you know, drowning or falling off a tree or bitten by a snake, but in general, there was a huge difference, and his conclusion was that the major difference was that the Indians, they were predominantly breathing through their nose, and the, the civilized people, the, the people living in the cities, they were predominantly breathing through their mouths. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's very powerful, and, you know, I, I want to address a few things for the skeptics out there, right? Because, you know, obviously... Um, there's a lot more to the health of a person yeah. than just their breathing. But, right, like, for instance, I'll give some examples because I, I'm, I'm, I can just feel it now. People are like, oh, come on. It's not just the breathing. The breathing is a huge component. But let's also talk about the fact that there was um, a lot more movement, Yeah. right, a lot less exercise because there's a difference, mm -hmm. right? There's a difference between going and crushing, you know, working in um, 
a toxin laden environment, living in a toxin laden environment, and then going to go stress your body even more by exercising and working out all the time. Um, our ancestors didn't have to do all that. Also, there there was way less chemicals in the food system, way less chemicals in the um, on the soil and in the on the plants, and um, there was not these big portions, and there wasn't fast food, and you know all of these things, right? But then when you layer on top of that the br- the breathing, that's when you get this huge amount of health, and so. I feel like this is what we could look back and try to duplicate if we want to live a healthier life. And with modern technology and people like ourselves, biohackers and whatnot, like there are ways to try to do something similar. And that's why I feel like this book was very important to read. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as you say, I totally agree. Of course, there are many different factors. And, and he, he write in the book, well, they ate buffalo meat, in the Indians while they eat bread and butter in, in, in the cities uh, to, to just realize that we, we're not using our, our body. We, we, there is always, we are always looking, you can say nature is lazy, humans, we are lazy. So we, we're looking for the most efficient way to do things. But of course, we should never go uh, over that and make it uh, too efficient, right? So, so that we there was probably a huge advantage when we invented fire and we were able to uh, prefer, prepare the food better. So we had to spend less energy to um, uh, absorb the nutrients from the food we got. But then maybe at some point where we are today, where we have this fast food, we are basically eating baby food that is way too easy to chew. So we are not using our uh, system the way it's designed for. So... Well said, because that, that also affects the jaw structure, mm-hmm. which also affects the, the the nasal structure, which affects, you know, the, the system in which we do breathe, right? So let, let's talk yeah. about that. Yeah, let's, let's exactly. That. That's one of the things he talks about. And also James Nestor brings it up a lot in his book about uh, uh, the fact that our skulls are changing because we are not using our teeth because our diets, they are uh, changing. And... Uh, he, he talks about it in, in the book, uh, how the Indians had, there were some tribes, they had the, the skulls, they preserved the skulls. And, and he saw these beautiful formed faces where the, the, the teeth and the, the jaws, they locked in perfectly. While if you mm-hmm. see a cranium, a cranium of uh, dead people from our society, that is not the case. We have crooked teeth all over the place and, and we have overbite or underbite or it's basically has to be uh, something that we're doing that is not correct and breathing is for sure one aspect of that because when we breathe through the nose we we will have our tongue resting in the roof of the mouth hopefully and if we do the, the the teeth will be aligned around the tongue because the tongue is u shaped right and if it's in place in in the roof of the mouth well then the muscles in the lips and cheek, they won't push too hard on the teeth because if the tongue is not there, they will push on the teeth and um, mm. make the, the teeth become misaligned. So the, the tongue has to be there as a counterweight. And it makes a lot of sense, right? But if you're then breathing through your mouth or if you just have your tongue resting in the, uh, in the bottom of your mouth, then you have the risk of getting a crowded teeth and you may have to have instra- um, teeth extracted and we also must remember right that these indians with their perfectly aligned teeth they had had no dentist they had no orthodontist right 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 so there is something that we can learn from that i'm not saying that every one of us should move out in the forest and live in a tent i, I don't think we, we want that but we can probably learn from a lot from from where the, the the natural people, how they lived and how they did things. <clears throat> well said. That's what I was actually going to bring up is that, mm-hmm. you know, in our modern society, especially after the the industrial revolution and all this oversimplification and, and uh, over specialization and various practices, mm-hmm. um, you know, we start to discover that braces are everywhere. And, you know, and then you've got all these teeth whiteners, and you've got all these things like deodorants and blah, blah, blah. And 
I, you know, I, I'm, I've always been such a curious young boy. Like when I was, when I was a young boy, I was always curious. People called me curious, Josh, like the <laughs> curious George ca- cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I used to think back like, wait a minute, like would our ancestors have toothpaste and toothbrushes and braces and deodorants. And, and then I used to always think to myself, like, I imagine like the smells were probably really horrendous back then because they couldn't brush their teeth or they couldn't put on deodorant. But really that's probably not the case. I mean, I'm sure there was an acquired smell. I'm sure. But when you don't have all these toxins in the body, you don't have to worry about your teeth being brown. True. When you don't have all these toxins in your body, you don't have to worry about, these smells coming out of your armpits, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have to worry about these smells com- oozing out of your body because you're not dealing with as many toxins as we do today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and yeah, I just come to think of, uh, I have a, a little office in Sri Lanka and uh, one of my colleagues there, I mean, they, they eat with the hand mostly. And, and also my colleague, she, she eat the fish bones and actually even <laughs> chicken bones. <laughs> Imagine, it, what a workout for, for the teeth uh, and, and the jaws. Of so, course. I'm, I'm, gonna give, I'm, gonna... I'm sure she's not grinding her teeth at night because that is probably a um, reason when we're not using the jaw daytime. It's a muscle that wants to be used. So, so then we grind our teeth at night. You know what this is, right? No, tell me. This is a, you know, it's a Ayurvedic chew stick. Ah. which is basically made of it's like a neem a neem stick that you can chew on so we call them chew sticks right and this was about the closest thing to natural toothbrush that um that you know our ancient ancestors would have used and it's, it's still used today you know i used to i got this at erewhon when i was in um in la and i've just kept them with me i used to just chew on these things all the time but mm-hmm. it's antibacterial um, you, you can suck the juice out of it when you're chewing it. So you kind of uh, fray it. So you can just kind of get it moist. Yeah. So now you're absorbing the, the antibacterial components, which helps the, the, the flora in the mouth. Yeah, but yeah. then as it gets soft, you kind of chew it and fray it. And that's kind of like a, a toothpick, right? Because you get some of these bits in your teeth, right? So this yeah. was a – this. and by the way, for those who aren't watching, I'm holding up this thing that literally looks like a twig. I mean, it literally is a twig. It's a twig. Um, and you can put it in your mouth and you just kind of suck on it. <laughs> but you, you don't get talking. high or anything, no. No, you don't get high. I mean, you got to use other sticks for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, I, this is the kind of stuff that I feel like is is really miss, missing in today's world. I mean, this is the sort of ancestral wisdom side of things, which I like to talk about a lot. Yeah. Of course, I'm big into the biohacking scene and I'm big into the modern technology, but there's this balance, you know, I have fancy toothbrushes, of course, but I also have primitive tools like a chew stick. Yeah. And, and of course, to be fair, no doubt they had challenges, the, the Indians, as we're talking about from the book there, right? And we have yeah. overcome a lot of those challenges, uh, but we have probably introduced quite a, a lot of new challenges along the way. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so one, one thing about the book, he, he states there that I have witnessed thousands of women breastfeeding their children and not a single time have I seen them after breastfeeding is done to, to not make sure that the, the lips are together before the little infant is going to sleep. So always making sure the lips are together. So it was like from day one, the uh, there was a lot of emphasis on making sure that the lips were together, which then ensures, of course, nasal breathing. And again, that that's just they they had no teaching other than what they saw their parents do and their parents' parents yeah. do, and and this is passed on. But now somewhere there was a big gap, right? There's somewhere there was, it was like we were missing this thing. Yeah. And so when he asked, uh, "Why do you do that?" to ensure a healthy and long life. That was the, the answer to that, why they put, made sure the lips were put together. And, and if we think about it, I know I'm biased here because I'm, I'm, I'm spreading uh, the, this word about the importance of, of breathing, uh, the breathing habits. And, and 
if we stop breathing, we die. We, 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 that is our number one bodily function. The breathing rhythm will affect all other rhythms, the heart rhythm, the brain rhythms, the rhythms in your stomach, the intestines, the hormonal rhythms. If you change your breathing rhythm, the rhythm of these other, um, the, the heart and brain, etc., will follow. It's very easy right. to imagine if I start breathing like that, it will affect my heart compared to if I breathe low and slow and rhythmically, it will affect my, my heart and my brain, my intestines in, in, in another direction. Well said, and, and thank you for that. I, I feel like, um, you know, if we haven't piqued the interest of, of, of our listeners and watchers, viewers right now, um, you know, I, then I don't know what else will 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 do that. But um, again, just to reiterate for those listening and watching, I would suggest check out the book Breath, check out Conscious Breathing by uh, the gentleman across the screen from me now, Mr. Anders Olson. Also, check out Shut Your Mouth if you're curious. I mean, it's a it's a difficult read because it's yeah. it's written so long ago, so it is a difficult read. I will admit that. Um, but because I'm interested in these things, I, I definitely read the whole thing from, from start to finish. Um, and then I'm currently reading the book by Patrick McEwen called, uh, the breathing cure. Yeah. And again, I like to, to really dive deep into all the different, because there's more than one way to get to a goal, to get to an end point. And I, and I love when people have different ways of either explaining it or different methods of achieving a certain result. Because at the end of the day, whatever it is that gets you to breathe better, that's, that's what you go with. And if I can present that by means of different avenues or different routes, then I've done my work. <laughs> yeah. 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 I agree totally. And, and of course we are all individuals and we get attracted to different things and uh, there are many ways to reach nirvana or whatever we we are aiming for <laughs> well said so okay so i feel like we've belabored the the whole book conversation um yeah. so let's talk about so on on episode 173 we we talked a lot about the um the the suit right the um, the body what, what you, yes yes yeah the body stream excuse me um the body stream suit which i still have i i still use i love it yeah. Um, I finally figure out, figured out a way to make it easier for me to get all of my hair into the, the neck bit and whatnot. So <laughs> that, that's cool. And, and for those who don't know, I'm speaking about the blue suit that I, that I posted a lot about in which, you know, I, I suck out all of the, the oxygen and air, and then I fill it with, with 100% pure carbon dioxide puffs up like a, like a Michelin man suit and, I even did like um, uh, Instagram reels in which I was like a Teletubby because uh, yeah. a lot of people were, were mentioning that like, oh, you look like a Teletubby. So I, I thought, perfect. This is a good reel to post. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so we did talk a, a bit about that in episode 173. So again, if you want to know more about why that's beneficial or why it may not be beneficial for you, go and check out that episode. But let's talk about now the carbohaler because I think when we were doing – episode 173, you weren't at a point where you could really talk too much about the carbohaler, mm -hmm. but I feel like you are now, or you're at least a lot closer now than you were then. So let's, yes. let's, let's talk about the carbohaler. Yeah. So, I mean, the idea uh, with the body stream suit, it's you fill it up with carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is absorbed through your skin. And what carbon dioxide does, it's, it's expansion. It's open up open up the airways, open up the blood vessels, make the smooth muscles relax. So it's an opener. When we have a problem, in my view, there is friction, there are blockages, emotional, physical, mental blockages, and the, the carbon dioxide helps to release those. And when there is no friction, there is free flow. And that is what we want, I, I think, uh, many of us. So... It's basically the same idea with the relaxator. It's another way of increasing the carbon dioxide in your body because you slow down your breathing. You prolong the exhale and you breathe lower and slower and more rhythmically. And then you, you uh, keep more of the carbon dioxide that is produced in your body because we take in oxygen 
and we exhale carbon dioxide. So when you slow down your breathing, you keep more of the CO2 in your body, which again then open up the body. So the, the, the relaxator is one way of doing it. Taping your mouth at night is another way of, of doing it. Doing physical activity with closed mouth is a, yet another way of increasing your CO2 exposure in your body and open up your body. And the body stream is another way and the carbohaler is then also another way, which uh, the carbohaler is a, you just put on a mask and you connect it to a gas tank and then you spike the air you inhale with from 1% to I think 7% carbon dioxide. Normally we inhale 0.04%. So you could say that you increase the CO2 inhalation by 50 to 100 times. So wow. Yes, it's, it's quite a lot. And, and this has actually been used a lot in, in the mid-1900s, um, 1920s, 1930s. And, and for some reason, they have abandoned CO2 and went all in on oxygen. Oxygen is the key mm. molecule. Just let push in oxygen in, into the system. But I think that is way too invasive. Oxygen is really, really toxic. We, we have to remember that. And carbon dioxide is a more gentle approach, more gentle. It's carbon dioxide that opens up, basically inviting the oxygen. So instead of using force, pushing, you, you are inviting the oxygen and, and the body can then take what, what it uh, needs, what it wants. And so the carbohaler, when you inhale, you may only do it for, you know, two, three, four minutes and at maybe say two or three or four percent CO2. And that will then help you to open up your airways, open up your lungs so that you can start to function better. The gas exchange in your lungs can function better. So this process of moving the air in and out of the lungs, that becomes more efficient because mm. at the end of the day, we're doing it thousand times an hour on average. And if we're doing it in an inefficient way, for example, if we have narrow airways in, in the throat and in the lungs, that means that is similar to, to, um, to driving and having a, a foot on the, the, the brake. It's not very efficient. So, but what a lot of us do, instead of a, a removing the foot from the brake, we, we push harder on the gas pedal. We then, if we translate that to breathing, we breathe faster. We, we increase the stress hormones. You know, if you have asthma or if you have a, with asthma, you have stress hormones you get, right? You, you get the steroids, that's cortisol, uh, cortisol is mm -hmm. a stress hormone. Or you get a, a <clears throat> inhaler, which contains a, a adrenaline-like substances to open up the airways. So cortisol reduces inflammation in the throat. Adrenaline opens up the airways. So, and, and, or if you get a, a, an allerg allergic reaction, and some people have really, for example, they are allergic to nuts and they get it by mistake. They eat it and uh, they could end up in a life-threatening situation. Then they carry along a, a, an adrenaline shot, right? You take the adrenaline shot and the airways open up. So when we uh, have narrow airways, we, we go around feeling more stressed out. Because the, if we think about what, what does the, the, the body needs more than anything, it's oxygen. So whenever there is a slight threat to our breathing, oh, I can't take the next breath. Every single alarm system in your body will go completely on red alert, meaning that all your stress hormones will go up. So, uh, including yeah, cortisol and, and and adrenaline to open up the airways to make sure that we can take the next breath. So, when we inhale carbon dioxide through this carbohydrate device, then we will also automatically reduce the stress because we remove or reduce the friction, we remove or reduce the blockages, and then there is the free flow of air, and then there is the free flow of, uh, of uh, blood. Beautifully put. Thank you for that. I mean, it, it's, again, I feel like um, the way you explain it and the way I explain some of these things and the way that 
this information is laid out in various books and things online. I feel like people should be able to navigate their own way to, to see what works best for them. Yeah. But I do think the most important takeaway should be and could be is that we should embrace carbon dioxide. And for yeah. whatever reason, carbon dioxide has become vilified and it's like people feel or, or they hear or they think or they've learned that you want to get rid of carbon dioxide and get in more oxygen. But that's totally backwards, right? And, and there is yeah. a threshold. There is a threshold for, for the carbon, carbon dioxide buildup or lactic acid buildup or whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and in fact, what I think of when you talk about the carbohaler and how mm -hmm. there's a small percentage of carbon dioxide that is, that is put into your inhale, mm -hmm. it makes me think of this whole mask discussion, you know, with this pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and before we, we, we touch on that, are, do you have the carbohaler nearby that we, so we can see it for those who are watching? Actually, I sent it uh, to a woman uh, that had cancer just uh, mm -hmm. some time ago. So uh, okay, she, she borrowed it, yeah. Uh, okay, no worries. No so worries. I don't have it in my office now, unfortunately. But I imagine it, it, it's a mask-like device, right? Yeah, it, well, you, you put a mask over your, your nose and mouth, and uh, then you connect it. Uh, you have a hose. And then you connect it to a, a, a small device, which in turn is connected to a gas tank, a carbon dioxide gas tank. And you can adjust the amount of carbon dioxide that is released, I would assume? Yeah. You, you adjust the carbon dioxide. You, you set the timer from 1 to 15 minutes. And then it's just counting down. And uh, then it stabilizes at the level you set it. In. And you can then create your own protocol. You can say, I want to do two minutes at 2%, and then I want to do another two minutes at 4% or whatever. So for everyone listening, by the way, uh, I am on the waiting list for, for, yeah. for the carbohaler. <laughs> and yeah. uh, as soon as I get my, my hands on it, uh, of course, as always, I'll be doing some, some uh, content around that um, because I've, I've learned so much about my own body and my brain and my nervous system and my autonomic uh, pathways to, to understand that like so many things have improved simply by just working on my breath and working on being able to extend my exhale and extend my breath hold times. And another thing that, that you touched on earlier that I wanted to bring up is the breathing low and slow. And one of the things that uh, Patrick McEwen talks about, which I think helps people to, to remember it even easier, we all know the acronym LSD, right? And so um, I believe in, in his teachings, it's uh, light, slow, and deep. Yeah. And, and, you know, we all can remember LSD. It's just easy to remember. But whether it's light or it's low, the idea is to slow down the exhale. That's it. You know, so I'm saying and, low, slow, and diaphragmatic. That's the same then. Yeah, there, exactly, exactly. And, but and but whatever, I, I put in the rhythmical because I think that is totally overlooked. We, whatever we do, if you go out for a, a walk, a jog, or if you have sex, and you, or if you listen to music and it's all unrhythmic, you, you wouldn't want to go to for that walk again. You don't want to listen to that music again, but. The rhythm, that is where we find the, the, uh, the beauty, the, the, the beautiful music, the, uh, the nice walk. We get into a rhythm or the jog or, or we're making love. That's the key. And it's the same with the breathing. I think that is totally overlooked. So it has to be in that small uh, uh, acronym. The, it will be an LSR. But, but anyway, but rhythm is, is so important, I think. And it, it really, if we look at... Any other aspect, we can realize that the rhythm, whether it's the day and night or it's the, the moon cycle or menstruation cycle, there are rhythms everywhere in, and well, or our heart or our brain. And the key rhythm for us is, is the breathing rhythm. Well said. Well <laughs> said. Um, Mr. Mr. Anders, before we continue, um, there's something I've added into the show that I, that I forgot to even uh, tell you about it's it's nothing crazy uh mm -hmm. but i've started to do uh since i don't know the last few episodes mm -hmm. and basically when i get to about the 30 minute mark 
I've incorporated a Pomodoro break. And that's essentially a way for, for us to kind of get it, get out of our sedentary states. And actually this is the first podcast in a long time in which I'm sitting down uh, throughout the, the podcast. So it, I really, really have this need to get up out of my seat. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm standing up. Um, you're standing up. Good. So I'm normally standing up. I think you probably realize that, but obviously I'm not at home. I'm at a hotel room right now. Yeah. Um, so I have this need to want to get up and move. So I, I always na- now I've started to offer the opportunity for my guest to offer something that they may do for a break in a sedentary lifestyle. So is there anything that you could offer for, for me or for my for the, the listeners and viewers that you would do to kind of break up the movement? And if not, I'm happy to offer something, but I always like well, to offer I'm not first. sure if it's for everyone, but since about a month ago, I'm doing a headstand, about three minutes. Uh, I love that, but I also uh, realize that it's not for everyone. <laughs> okay, so... Um, a hand, I'll do a handstand, right? So I'm going to just, okay. again, this is, this is uh, to offer for those who are watching, I'm going to do a quick handstand, all right? And again, this is just to allow me to simply walk the talk, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so this is a treat for those who are actually watching the show. Okay. Um, I do a headstand. Let's see. You do a headstand. I'm going to do a handstand. And, uh, well, if you hear a lot of banging, you know what happened. (laughs) All right, so here we go. So if you're just listening to the show, I am upside down right now. Me too. Doing a handstand against the wall. And I think this served as a really good Pomodoro break. All right. Okay, thank you for that. Woohoo! Okay. All right. So that's a first on the show for sure. Thank you for that. <laughs> so now that's a really good way to kind of get the blood um, circulating in the brain. Uh, of course, yeah. I was practicing my breathing. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, all right. Cool. Yeah. So that's that's something that I like to do, kind of like every thirty minutes or so. Um, so when we have the longer podcast, we do it more than once. But right. um, that yeah, felt I great. I haven't done. I, it. I love the Pomodoro. I think it's great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, so we've we've talked about the books. Mm-hmm. We've talked about the carbohaler. Yeah. We talked a little bit about the uh, the body stream um, and the relaxator, of course. Um, yeah. Let's talk about the the conscious breathing summit. Let's, okay. Let's dive. And before, can I just finish off with the carbohaler just to please, put it please. in perspective? So a lot of us, we have what I used to have a lot of the racing mind. We have problems to wind down, problems to be present, to be in the flow. We are always uh, thinking about the past or the future or have problems to, to concentrate. And our brain is our major oxygen consumer. So uh, there is a risk with today's society where we are bombarded with stimuli that we start to breathe more and then there will be more oxygen in the brain. And the, the brain needs to deal with that oxygen. So it produces more thoughts and, and more uh, need to move because the nervous system gets activated. So oxygen is the stimulant. So if you, uh, it, it ignites the fire while carbon dioxide is the opposite. So it's uh, uh, oxygen is the yang, carbon dioxide is the yin. Oxygen is the, um, the, the free radical producer, free oxygen radicals, and that is what we also call inflammations, while carbon dioxide is an antioxidant. So if you think mm. about the mitochondria, which are all over the place, if we remove the water in our body, there is 10% of the body weight is the mitochondria. There are thousands of them in our brain cells, in our liver cells, heart cells, and they are like the furnaces in our body. So it's like we have a fire burning in those mitochondria. So the oxygen comes there and ignite the fire and keeps these uh, fires burn in the mitochondria, while carbon dioxide actually puts out the fire. And you need to have a balance too much oxygen, mm. those fire will burn too much, 
and too much carbon dioxide, those fires will die out. So actually, if you look at fire extinguishers, there are carbon dioxide fire extinguishers. Mm. Because it makes so much sense. Because if you want to put out a fire, you you can put a blanket over the fire, or you can you can put uh, carbon dioxide on the fire because the carbon dioxide will basically then remove the oxygen, so the fire dies out. So it's the balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide. And what I uh, tend to see when you look at research, uh, or if you look at ordinary people when you meet them on the street or, or in the cafeteria, whatever, we have a tendency to overbreathe. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we are breathing through the mouth. We are maybe still breathing through the nose, but shallowly and fast, meaning that we take in too much oxygen, meaning that this oxygen will then become toxic. It would be a burden for the body. So that is a reason why we can't um, calm down. So when you use the relaxator, it's to relax. When you use the body stream, it's to get into the parasympathetic state. And the same with the carbohaler. It's to open up the body and to be able to achieve more with less efforts, basically, to realize that I don't have to be in sympathetic state, in fight flight, in order to, to uh, get where, where I want. I can wait to put in the turbo until it's really needed. Like if I'm running a marathon, I may only need it the last five kilometers. The other time I can be in my parasympathetic state, which is much more efficient. Um, so that is what these things help you with, that, in my view. It's a wonderful view. And, and again, I love, I love talking to different people to be able to explain it in a way that I can grasp it better. Yeah. And you just helped me to grasp that a lot better, especially talking about the fire because a lot of people understand that when you, let's say like there's a candle or, um, or something that's burning and you put a cap on the top of it, you starve it of oxygen, it goes out. So I think yeah. that's pretty easy for everyone to understand and grasp, right? Um, or yeah. putting a blanket on a fire. Um, well, the same could be said, as you just laid out, the same could be said with carbon dioxide. And yeah. that's a really good way of thinking about it. So when you're over breathing, over breathing, you're more in an, in, a, in an excited state. Yeah. And when you're extending your exhale and slowing down your breathing, then you should, chances are you're going to be in a more sympathetic, uh, a parasympathetic state, yeah. which is a more relaxed, calm state. And in fact, um, I just did a post yesterday about, um, about what I use with clients in terms of uh, different different products. Like I have this um, Troscriptions Trocom, which is a, um, it has uh, hemp extract, kava, um, and you know, you put this trochi in your mouth. And of course, this is one way to chemically help the body um, or using, you know, a substance to help the body to get in a more calm state. But imagine pairing that with the relaxator. Or imagine pairing that with uh, just extending your exhale without a, a, you know, another tool. Yeah. That's when you can really get into these powerful states. And this is what I like to talk about. I like to really help people find ways. You don't have to have this. You don't have to have this. You know, um, but we're born with this and this. And yeah, we're born with this. the mouth and nose. And we can just you 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 know you can prolong your exhale with just a, a straw or with pursed lips or with the Ujjayi breathing. So, or, or you ch can just go out for a walk and, and decide to take twice as many steps on the exhale as on the inhale. It's, it's really, yeah, you don't need, you have everything <laughs> with you all the time. Yeah. Well said. All right. So anything else about the, the, the carbohaler or the no. stream or the relaxator? No. Okay. Well said. I, I'm excited to get, get more you know info on that and, and more experience with that i should say mm -hmm. um and uh for the lucky few who have had the opportunity i say lucky as in they've gotten a chance to use it but you know i very much understand that you know you are doing whatever you can for people who really need this like people with cancer and people with with other uh breathing issues i know the importance of that so i'm happy that they have someone like you by their side mm -hmm. um but let's talk about this summit I think that's yeah. one of the big things on the horizon for you. 
It is, yeah, indeed. So uh, September 14, 15, and 16, there w- it will be arranged here in Stockholm. And um, there will be a lot of exciting speakers from different, coming from different ac- aspects. But the, the um, foundation is the conscious breath. So they talk about, uh, so James Nestor will be one of the speakers. Uh, obviously, uh, picking uh, things from his book. Uh, we will also discuss about our journey together. So it will be a conversation with us. And, and uh, probably we will discuss where we disagree, which I think is interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and then will, will, there, we'll, there, will, will there be a live stream component to that or, or a video component? Mm, no, not uh, at this point. Not, not, no. Okay. No. All right. Because, damn it, I want to hear that conversation. I feel like that's going to be a good one. <laughs> yeah, it seems like people are willing to travel. I think we have uh, participants uh, as of now from uh, eleven different countries, so including yeah. U- U.S. and Canada. So it's wow, exciting. Yeah. So and and yeah. So James is one of the speakers. There was one speaker who is into barefoot running. He's been for many years. So he's a former ultra marathon runner. Mm. He is um, the owner of a concept store here in Sweden selling barefoot shoes, and they also do foot uh, consultation. And just a realization that our feet affects our posture and it affects our breathing. So those go really hand in hand. It's almost like when you, you, you move naturally, you will activate your diaphragm. If you have these cushion shoes and, and where, where you uh, uh, the, the toes get squeezed together, then it will affect your posture. So it will actually force your breath higher up in your chest. Yeah. So that's a really interesting angle. Are you into barefoot running at all? Or uh... Absolutely. <clears throat> it, in fact, that has been one of my sort of biggest platforms since I started training. And, um, you know, and in fact, like I'm barefoot now, I'm always barefoot. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, I have barefoot shoes. I'm, I'm very closely aligned with, uh, Vivo barefoot. I've been working with them for, for more than a decade. And one of the things that I like to present to people, I was just having a conversation with one of the managers of, of this tour, uh, last night, in fact, but uh, the bottoms of our feet have more proprioceptive, um, receptors than any other part of the body yeah. and that's there for a reason because yeah. our feet are our foundation and so <laughs> anytime that you add a layer of of separation between the ground and and the and these these very sensitive proprioceptive receptors mm-hmm. then you're slowing down the signal to the brain yeah the rest of the body so um i i definitely would love to find out more about what this this guy is doing what is his name uh, Sebastian C. He he's from Sweden, and uh, I attended a um, a one week retreat in Croatia actually uh, with him, a, a runner's retreat. So it was really great to learn a lot of what he had to share. He, he's really like me, a nerd like you. <laughs> yeah, like exactly. Nerds. <laughs> yes, I do too. <laughs> if we just imagine, I mean, evolutionary wise, we, we have a tendency we rely on our eyes and ears and and. But our feet must have been so important to convey information to the brain yeah. uh, previously in uh, our evolution. But today we have these uh, shoes that stop a lot of that information. So it's basically, I guess, to, to walk around like with one eye uh, closed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And again, it comes back to specialization, over specialization, right? So, um, yeah. you know, there was there's obviously a point at which maybe shoes are necessary to protect us from glass and nails and rocks and sure. things like this. Yeah. But, you know, our ancestors built up this very thick, um, almost like a callus around the feet. And, and this is, this is what became like a shoe, right? Yeah. Like this, this like thick leather, like um, texture to the bottom of the feet Wow. became a little bit more like a shoe and that was enough to protect us you know and of course there were injuries like we all have injuries and things like that mm-hmm. um but then also what happens when you start to add layers of, of cushion to to a foot especially in sports you're now able to put way more force reaction 
into the body that the body's not necessarily prepared to take or to be able to withstand over periods of time. Yeah. So the when you take the shoes off and you go and you play basketball or you go and you play um, or, you know, you weight lift or you go and you jump or whatever, you may not jump as high. You may not land as hard. Right. Because you know that like you could hurt yourself, mm-hmm. you put shoes on, then you just go and you do whatever. And then yeah. your body has to deal with that later. Yeah. That's the, the problem with having all this cushion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So. Anyway, yeah. So, so um, another speaker would be uh, a, an actor, and and he is a voice coach. And then he took my uh, course, uh, the breathing course. And before he took the course, he started to questioning what is actually my profession. Am I really a voice coach, or am I actually a breathing coach? Because ninety percent of my clients, they want to improve their communication, their voice, and they have problems with their breathing because it goes so much hand in hand. When you move your breath higher up in your chest, you will change the dynamic in your throat. You will, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The Adam's apple or the, uh, the vocal mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. cords. Yeah. It will move up higher. So basically you move up the whole system. Your attention goes up in your brain when you move up your breath and your vocal cords will move up. So the range you have to play with, it, it, it becomes smaller. So it's harder to listen to you. you, you or there's something with that voice I don't like. Well, it may be because you are a shallow breather. So he helps his clients to, uh, to breathe better. And then as a side effect, their uh, voice will improve. So, um, yeah, that's really a, a really great uh, speech. And then there is one woman talking about addiction. And it, it's really also interesting to see how that last time we spoke a little bit about the, the Stanford study I participated in together with James Nestor, where uh, we blocked our nose for 10 days. And I noticed during these 10 days, how my sugar cravings just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, mm. It was really obvious. I, I the, the last few days in the study, I ate pizza and had beers and, and, uh, chocolate and ice cream and then i normally don't eat so so much of these things uh, or drink so it was really a profound change and it was almost like i was doing a a time journey going back to my previous life when i was much more stressed out and wow then i i felt a much uh, more need to reward myself um, and that was in 10 days right that was that all happened in 10 days that happened in 10 days yeah yeah. yeah. So there and is then, a really close connection. For example, when you uh, have food addictions, when you, you are so craving these sweets, uh, these uh, the fast carbohydrates, and, and uh, y- you know, w- when you eat junk food, they have a really low pH. So a Coca-Cola, for example, a pH of two and a half. But that's also for coffee and for a lot of this fast food and, and also alcohol. So when you eat food with low pH, your body feels that it needs to adjust. So it starts to breathe more. When we exhale more CO2, we increase the pH. So it's basically you eat junk food and you breathe more in order to to get a pH balance back. And the vice versa. If you overbreathe, then you will crave more junk food. So Mm. so there is one thing with the food addiction, but then you also have the, um, you know, cigarettes and alcohol and they could also be attributed. There there is a a breathing component in all of them. So this woman, she's been working with this for almost 30 years. She's a a true expert in the field. Wow. And then there will be talking about lymphatic system. There will be a Stanley Cup champion, a two time Stanley Cup champion talking about breathing and performance and uh, optimum recovery. Okay. So let, uh, first of all, if, if you haven't understood the, the power, the impact of, of this, these, this variety of speakers from different backgrounds and from different realms in health and wellness, um, please check this information out and uh, how long is it is it is it a one day summit is it a no it's 14th uh, that's in the evening with me and james and then it's the 15th and the 16th so it's two full days 
15th and the 16th and in the evening on the 14th. So wow. Tour during three days. Yeah. The yeah, so breathing summit.com. Conscious breathing summit.com. Yeah. This, I, I honestly could say that, um, you know, if, if I wasn't on tour, I would be there hundred yeah. um, percent. Whether I'd be there as a, as a, a speaker or as you would a, have been a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds like you've really, you've really found some top quality experts. And so I, I feel like this, this conscious breathing summit is going to be life changing for lots of the people that are able to participate. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely check it out. Conscious breathing And um, yeah, as we, as we start to wrap this up, uh, I want to offer you like, you know, the, the, the time to be able to say anything else you want to say. And then let's go into the, the questions that I usually ask at the end of the show, which I know you know about. Right. Uh, no, I think we, we covered a lot of stuff. I, I don't have anything more to add. Uh, it, well, it's, it's really at the end of the day, it's super simple. And that could also be a reason why it hasn't gotten the recognition it deserves because we overlook it because life just has to be more complicated than that. But it's right. really at the end of the day simple. Yeah, I, I agree with you. To, to piggyback on top of that, I feel like it gets overlooked because people go, "But it's breathing, like it's, it's breathing." Yeah, you know, like like I, I know how to breathe. Very similar to running, right? I, I'm a barefoot running expert, and I've worked in barefoot running courses and all kinds of stuff for for 15 years. Mm-hmm. I remember at the beginning, I'm like, "Yeah, but it's running." You know, I ran track in college or in, in high school. I did in college as well, but mainly in, in high school and and once I did some real research and real experience in in the art of running and running styles and barefoot running and all these things, I thought back to like, damn, why didn't I have a coach or or a mentor or someone I could look up to back then? Imagine what I could have done then, but that's okay because now I know. And so I try to put as much of this information out there. And the same goes with breathing. Yeah, yeah of course, we were born to breathe. And if you don't mess up, uh, the systems and you have a parent that, you know, a mother that can close your lips and teach you how to nasal breathe and all these things, this can get carried on. So, so on and so forth down the line. And it can be, you know, we can actually change our world by learning how to breathe better. You know, if we have a society of people who are over breathing, that means we have a society of people who are stressed out and making rash decisions. And this is why we have, you know, like war and, and anger and, and all of these things. And I'm not trying to say that learning how to breathe is going to fix that, but it certainly could help. <laughs> yeah, it can. So. One tagline I use is change your breath, change your life. And, and at the end of the day, conscious breathing, just as much as it is a health project where people with asthma or sleep problems or heart issues can get help. And as well as it is a performance project where you can perform better at work or have more stamina when you exercise. It's also a peace project because peace on the inside really means peace on the outside. War and conflicts, they start with the individual, right? So mm. if we can own that and realize that, that we, we can actually have access to a more calmer state within, that will be reflected in, in our actions and, and our communication. So. Beautiful. Beautifully said. Okay. So, Mr. Olson. Yeah. Um. I usually ask two questions at the end of the show yeah. for the guests on the, on, on, on the podcast. And I know you, you are prepared for this because you did so very well in episode 173. Um, what are your top two pet peeves? Top two pet peeves. Yes. What are, what are two things that kind of get under your skin? I, I don't recall what you said on the last show, so it doesn't have to be the same. So I, get, I just, pep, I, I haven't heard that word before, I think, yeah. The, yeah, the, the so gets it, under it, my skin. You mean that I really? Yeah. What are two things that kind of frustrate you about anything, right? Like, uh, you know, I, I think one of the examples I gave before is um, people uh, walking slowly in the in the fast lane, right? Or people driving slowly yeah. in the flat fast lane. Yeah. Or yeah. loud chewing, right? Like, I think loud chewing when you're eating food gets to be but, you know, and, and it's always something different. Something comes up, I think, every time I think about this. But what, what is something that comes to mind now? 
that gets under my skin. I I think it is uh, when people are have a low level of awareness that they just don't care. They just don't realize that they are a part of, of uh, creating this world together with everyone else. And they just, you know, throw away trash on the street or, or just uh, complain like they are spoiled and, and uh, think that they are the center of the world and that their small problem is is uh, uh, so big and so huge and, and have an inability to see the bigger picture. I, I, I Of course, I understand that we all have a need to complain now and then, but overall, uh, I, I think uh, spoiled people that um, don't take care of themselves and don't take care of, of others and, and don't take responsibility, that's kind mm. of annoys me a little bit yeah that so that's a big one and i think there was at least two in there right so i heard okay um, okay good so then i'm done right <laughs> yeah yeah because you know you, you mentioned people who like throw trash on the on the street without regard to any sort of you know downstream effect so you know we say people who who don't recycle right because i mean i think that recycling is not the answer necessarily but i agree it's I Right. It's, it's. I think. I think the the consumption is the problem. We we Ooh. try to to uh, blame. Or we try to fix it with recycling. But obviously, the number one thing is to not purchase the stuff in the first place. But since everyone is locked in to this system, if we start to to uh, uh, purchase less, well, then there will be uh, unemployment. You won't get your retirement money or whatever because the stocks will go down, right? So we're mm. all part of that system. But I think that is the foundation for the problems we are facing. We're talking about climate issues and that we should be carbon dioxide neutral, etc. But at the end of the day, I think it's the consumption. And, and that, again, ties into the awareness and the consciousness yes. where we consume just because. I think instead of focusing on all these outer things, whether it's... Uh, the newest gadget or, or if it's an authority like a doctor or the president or God or whomever, I think outer growth is, that's the old days. We, we should focus on the inner growth. We, we, when we do, we don't purchase things. So we, we don't contribute as much to that, to that um, consumption. And I think that is what we need. The world really needs us to take a, 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 a jump a leap in in our consciousness in order to face the issues that we have created beautiful so i'm hearing overconsumption and entitlement aka lack of awareness so yeah. i think that's that that's a very concise way of, of explaining that so thank you for that it's it's great yeah. um and very powerful too so again thank you um <clears throat> so the last question is what is something you're most grateful for? Most, what comes to mind? I think my spirit, my, my, that the energy and the curiosity and the, um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really yeah. grateful for that. My, my, my turbo who used to be to a large extent a problem for me because he was always on. <laughs> And now mm -hmm. I've learned to manage it. I, I love my turbo. I wouldn't want to go without it, but I've also learned to turn it off. But I'm most grateful for that energy, that drive, that curiosity. Hmm, how is that? What, how, how does that work? And can you improve it or can it be done differently? Maybe similar to when you described uh, Curious George, uh, Curious Josh, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. I can, I can very much relate. And again, for those who are not watching, you may have missed out on this moment in which I could feel coming through the screen that this is a true gratitude moment for you because you just you ooze this beautiful aura, this beautiful energy when you explain that. You know, you had this beautiful smile on your face just explaining that. So I, I can I can tell that you really felt into that and it's true. It's true to who you are. And I certainly can can um agree because that's all i've i've sensed from you 
is just lots of curiosity and uh, you're a very generous person and um, and you're very wise. You're, you're very experiential. So I, I just, I thank you for you. So I'm grateful for you and I'm grateful for all thank that you. you're doing for this world. Um, and again, just to reiterate, how can people find out more about you and uh, the company and, and let's give people an opportunity to, to hear about the summit again one, one more time. Yeah, so consciousbreeding.com is the website. And we're also on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, Conscious Breathing. And the summit is consciousbreathingsummit.com. A long name, a little bit hard to, to, uh, <laughs> to spell maybe, but yeah, that's how it is. That's okay. I think nowadays with, uh, with all the translate apps and whatnot, you know, it, it, it should be easy to spell. And of course, I will link to everything that we discuss in the show anyway. So if nothing else, just click on the links <laughs> yeah. and uh, you'll be able to go right to it. So Anders, thank you for your time. Thank you for your expertise. And uh, I look forward to staying in touch and we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Josh. What's up? All right. And to all the listeners and all the viewers, this is Joshua J. Holland signing out from Simply Walk the Talk. Peace. Walk the talk, Peace. talking text. Move like me, but I move a little fast. Make my move, here to last. Fast in these belts, I'm coming past. Take care of me, longevity. Hack my biology, better believe. Walking the talk, so mind and body connected. Better come give us a listen. Better come give us a minute or two. Open the box up, we giving you tools. Giving your engine the fuel that it needs. Breathing into it, it's autoimmune. Make a connection, we're stronger in two. Making us one of a kind of a few. Work on the mind, but show me your moves If you do what you say, you know what to do Yeah